Cowboy Jim, how you doing today? Um, yesterday, last night, actually. Um, I, I, I wasn't going to do a video uh, yesterday. I, I was kind of burned out a bit. Um, we have gone from, um, I'm not sure uh, whether it was June or May, uh, our first video. And uh, I, last night uh, we did our 110th video. Um, I did not realize that um, there was such an avenue of uh, the honor of communicating with people. I had uh, a superintendent who, uh, um, he and I were friends uh, for, for a while. He kind of headed off in a in a different direction, and uh, I uh, I did not understand uh, really, but probably still don't understand. And I I was thinking after doing that little video about my friend Helen uh, and her, her little uh, deaf and dumb daughter, um, that was the second, this last video I, I, I just finished, was the second time I had tried to portray uh, an understanding of why it is that uh, I so oppose um, abuse in all its forms uh, perpetrated against children, yes against adults, yes by people of low repute and I did, I didn't understand elder abuse either until well one day I, I looked into the eyes of a beautiful woman and she had called me Cowboy Jim and I, I, I never realized I never noticed that time had had moved around me and but I woke up one day that day I was shocked I, I mean yeah she was a, she was a, a child really I, but I had no idea that that some people would call me old I, I Delusional, okay, hey, suppose I'm guilty. But I always lived according to how I felt in my heart, in my soul, in my spirit, in my body. And I've had a few issues uh, with physical stuff. Didn't affect my heart. Didn't affect how I, I process thought. Whether I process thought. I, I most generally responded to other people's hurts. Um, anyways, for a man that doesn't like the word I, I have been using it a fair bit lately. It's not the desire of my heart to uplift myself in any way at all. I generally so self-deprecate that people actually begin to believe what I, what I say about myself. And I was thinking, you know, uh, 15th of December, um, I may well have the privilege and the honor of um, 
standing before a judge and not defending myself at all. I haven't been charged with anything, never have been charged with anything. Been in front of, well, this, the 15th of December, it, it is my time to defend myself for having been beaten uh, by a, a 34, 35 year old uh, um, elder abuser, definitely an abuser. And I, I think back to the other two times when I was brought before a, a judge uh, only, well actually uh, the first time, um, I, I grew up running hot cars, not stolen, power plants, muscle cars. And I was charged with speeding. Well, it's a good thing I was speeding. And um, the judge said, uh, well, you, you can pay uh, $52 uh, or you can spend three days in jail. I, I was 18, um, martial arts strong, not too tall just tall enough to not realize that I wasn't tall. Oh, go figure. Well, I only had $20 in my pocket and uh, my friend, uh, he, he was sitting beside me and uh, he said, do you have $52? I said, I don't have $52. I said, I only have 20. He says, you want to spend, th I said, I don't want to go to jail. I, I said, look, I, I didn't know anything about jail. I did not ever know uh, a family member of, of my family, my aunts, uncles, none, who had ever been in jail. We were kind of, we, we were kind of thoughtful about uh, not not the fear of going to jail. We were kind of thoughtful all the, as a family uh, to honor God. Oh, we, 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 we were rugged people. Simple. But jail, never. My friend, uh, his first name is Jim. And uh, Jim said, well, He's a, he was a bright child. Oh, dear Lord, could that man shoot poo? Whoa. And uh, he said, give me a minute. And uh, he, he got up and went up to the front of the courtroom. The judge was kind of staring at him and staring at me. I don't think the judge wanted to send me to jail. And uh, my friend asked the policeman standing at the the, the entry uh, as you were facing the judge uh, on on your left hand side. And he went over, he, he said, uh, sir, could I, I borrow your hat? And the officer was so caught off guard that he handed his, uh, his hat. Uh, to my friend, and my friend Jim, he uh, he just stepped right to the front row and uh, held the hat out and said, could you help uh, keep Jim out of jail? And uh, people started putting money in. That's a fact. And um, he, he went across the front. Uh, the, the judge just doing this sort of thing he the judge was speechless and uh, and my friend 
when he got to the end of the, the first, the front aisle, front row, he just handed it to the person behind and and the people in the courtroom, uh, well, my mom cut half their hair. Well, they cut all the hair of half the people that were there, let's say. And uh, when I was a kid, uh, payphone, I, I could pick the payphone up when I was uh, 12 years old and the operator would come on and I'd say, uh, I, I don't have any money. Uh, uh, I need you to call my mom. And they, and so I'd probably tee on or whatever. Who cares? And the operator would say, Jim, that's you, isn't it? And I would say, yes, it is. I said, could, could you call mom and tell her I, I'm ready for her to pick me up? Or, and the operator would say, no, no problem. Uh, she'd say, you, you, you just hang out, uh, just stay in the phone booth and, uh, and I'll call, call your mom, get her to come get you. And our family, though we weren't rich, we weren't poor, but that's how we were knowing. And uh, so my friend Jim, he collected uh, the money. Well, I think he collected $52 when I walked out of the courtroom. I, I think I still had my $20 on me. And uh, he, he, he gave the policeman back his hat. And I, I thanked the judge and I thanked the people and, and left. Uh, not a one of them ever asked for me to pay any of the money back. Uh, I, I, I would have done it. Shoot. If I had known the stupid fine would be that high, gee. Uh, I only had three speeding tickets in my life. One cost fifty-two dollars. I couldn't believe that. Uh, in about nineteen eighty, I had a speeding ticket on Highway Two. Uh, I think I was, I think I was going to church. I did back then. It cost ten dollars, and then. Somehow, in, in my last Corvette, uh, I crested a hill. They were marking the lines or doing some work, so I, I, I slowed her right down to 30K, and uh, I idled over the hill, and I just let gravity run wild. I, I didn't even put fuel to the thing. I just ran the gears. And, and I, I, I don't mean like a power shifted or anything. I just let her roll down the hill and well, didn't, didn't a wonderful looking red headed police lady pull me the them over. And uh, cause any one with white hair running a red Corvette, well, must have some age related issues. Well, shoot, I just liked running the Corvette. And uh, anyway, she gave me a, a ticket for 10 miles over the limit. Well, something had happened to the legal system, and it that cost me $153. And I thought, what a waste. Well, that, that was the last ticket I had. When I apply for a job, I always have to do a driver's abstract, and they always ask for a three years or whatever. I always get the lady, uh, get, get, give me a 10 year, uh, 15 year driver's abstract. And she looks at me, I said, listen, I don't need it that long, but it just irritates the hell out of my sons when they, <laughs> you know, I, I, I may possibly mention, you know, it's been 15 years or something since I had a ticket, speeding ticket got one for my stupid license plate I forgot to change. Anyways, several years later, uh, oh shoot, uh, yeah, after that first court case, um, I was, uh, I'd, on my days off, I built houses. Uh, oh, when I was 20, uh, well, I had, uh, no, 22, maybe I had a small apartment building one business in one town, another business in another town. I had uh, 
two, two uh, brand new houses I'd built and trying to sell them was kind of difficult. And, uh, but the first house, uh, it was quite, quite nice actually. No, that was the second. Doesn't matter. Um, my wife uh, of the day, uh, my first wife, well, that marriage only lasted 23 and a half years. And it uh, wasn't my idea for it to go away either. And uh, first time I ever washed uh, someone's feet, well, to someone's. Um, that little lady, she, uh, she woke me up about three in the morning and she said, there's someone walking in the driveway. We had a dog at the time. I don't think that was a dog that wouldn't eat my cooking. I, I, I gave that one away pretty early. But anyways, we, we did have this dog and uh, it was barking. And she, uh, she said, uh, he's getting into the car. Well, I come out of bed on the dead run I went past the gun case and I, well, it wasn't a gun case. Back then we were free. I just grabbed the first rifle I, I found. I, I grabbed three shells. I went out the front door and I dove across the hood of the car. Uh, don't don't mean to make it sound like I'm a hero because uh, I'm knowing. Uh, but that's what happened. And uh, I yelled pretty loudly and that young man that was back in my 73 wine colored burgundy colored old scudless had swivel bucket seats in it for crying out loud should have had those on the Corvette I mean you just hit a little lever seat turned right sideways you put your feet right on the ground on the 71 vet, it would have kept me from burning my calves and my legs on the on the hooker headers and side pipes. Oh, hot damn, did they get warm. And um, when that young man turned around and uh, I was holding that rifle about 17 inches from his face and I said, you get out of my car. And uh, fortunately, he, uh, he, he did stop the car. He did get out. I did climb with some difficulty because I was quite up under the hood. And it was at night. It was in the summer. And it was chilly. Kind of sticky on that. I had to elevate my body to get my body off the stupid hood. Anyways, I got the guys stretch out in the ground and I leaned back against the car and I knew I'd had trouble getting off the hood. Well, I hadn't noticed it initially, but I, when I sure did when I went to move. When I didn't have a lick of clothes on, not a thing. And uh, you remember Jim from that first uh, passing the policeman's hat around. Well, Jim, he, he and his lady, they, they lived next door. She was a nurse. And um, she stuck her head out the window and she wasn't in such a big rush to take it back. I, I said her name. I said, uh, could you get Jim up? And he can come and Hold this guy while I go get some clothes on. She she truly had a sense of humor, a uh, good lady, a nurse. Uh, well, it did take her about 4.5 minutes until she mentioned to Jim that he should get up and come give me a hand. Yeah, 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 really good yard lights. Anyways, anyways, okay, here. About two or three months later, a policeman uh, came to my little place of business on the main street. He said, uh, 
uh, I need you to come down to the courthouse. I said, uh, well, no trouble. And um, I walked, I said, uh, what's going on? Oh, he says, uh, that that uh, guy is, uh, that was trying to steal your car. Um, well, they're um, trying him today. So it might not even, well, it was still summer. So it probably wasn't even that long. And uh, I thought, cool. So anyways, I got one of my helpers to run the business while I, I, I went down. And a district, uh, or a, what was that? Defense attorney, that's him. Uh, he... Yeah, they they handed me the Bible. Uh, well, actually, they didn't. The court clerk, whatever, he uh, held the Bible out and said, uh, "Put your hand on this and say you uh, tell the truth." Uh, James uh, five verse twelve. It says, D "Don't swear in anything. Uh, just let your 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 word be the truth." And. Um, uh, he he went. I, I grabbed the Bible out of his hand, and 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 and, and I, I I did. I, I put my hand on the Bible, and I said, you know, I tell the truth. And but I I studied that Bible uh, quite extensively while uh, defense attorney was giving me a lot of trouble. The defense attorney finally summed it up and. I think he cross-examined me for what seemed like half an hour, but I, I'd been looking through the Bible. I was answering his questions, but the man was an idiot. I bet that's what a lawyer is when he's defending someone he knows is guiltier than hell, but his job is to give the best defense. Uh, not, not, not for the truth. I bet the de best defense that he could give in order to earn the money he doesn't deserve in order, well, perhaps he does. He went to school. Well, who knew? And uh, anyways, uh, uh, defense attorney says, Mr. Martin, do you uh, normally run around the neighborhood uh, pointing guns at people at three o'clock in the morning? I thought I could take you outside, son. Oh, and I could. Oh, oh damn. Uh, I may not have won. Oh, I probably would have. I said, son, when you're standing there, and it appears, because you can't say they were stealing, but it appears as though they're stealing your car and that they're backing it out the driveway. Uh and you're holding the rifle having to be the wrong bullets for the right rifle and you're absolutely buck naked I said son you need something pretty heavy in your hands well the courtroom did come unglued and they about fell right off the seats there are a lot of people watching Thank God the Wergas, they're probably some of the same people that had paid my fine when my friend passed the hat around when I was 18. And uh, so anyways, the uh, judge, he, uh, he, he, he kind of liked my Irish humor. And uh, I, I'd sat down, I got off the witness stand. And, uh, he he uh, sent that kid to jail, well, he's a 30-year-old dummy, kind of like the dummy uh, who uh, I let beat up this this uh, spring beat me up you know, in order to save my job didn't work fired him but they didn't want me around anyways after that uh, judge says Mr. Martin will you please stand up I thought oh hot damn I'm in trouble now I thought jeez He said, Mr. Martin, I said, yes, sir, your honor. He said, I want you to know something. I said, what's that? He said, I want you to know that I, I, I sleep easier at night knowing there are men like you who look out for our neighborhood. 
vote. I had heard of a judge who lived just across the Cedar, Cedar Swamp, just right on, on Georgian Bay there. He, I never met him, but he said, Mr. Martin, I thank you for being the type of neighbor that I need for my family and I to rest easy at night. And I thought, you got to be kidding. He, he, he wasn't kidding. And I thought, you know, we have the privilege and the honor of standing against uh, corruption. That's when, uh, that's when people use and abuse children. Uh, pick on women, mostly women. Oh yeah, I, I, I have a, I have a good friend. He, he was abused. He grew up to be an MMA fighter. And I, I said, why, why? He, he, he fought for several years across Canada. I said, why? Uh, when you step into the ring, uh, you know you're going to get hurt. Oh, he said, Jim, it's the only time I can hurt people and not get charged. But he had been hard used as a kid by his stepdad. And uh, I was hard used by um, a bastard. I, I I quite often will try to say uh, fatherless child. That's what it means. And um, you know, I, I was very, very, very much rejected of man this spring and all that crap. It's meaningless. If you can learn something from it, I did. I rode alone for so many years, it's safer. You don't invest of yourself, chances are you're not gonna get hurt. But chances are you'll be living in the hurt that you've lived in most of your life. See, it's only when you invest of yourself that you put yourself in peril, in risk, at risk. But the only way to attain unto anything of value in terms of helping someone else out is to put yourself at risk. So, hey, we're a bit over. Oh. So, uh, December 15th, uh, 2021. Hey, uh, Uh, justice is not justice as as we know it. Uh, justice is uh, nowadays it seems uh, whatever you can get away with that's okay uh, because people are going to judge you anyways. I, I went from being pretty popular uh, uh, and at that company, uh, I got. I lost a lot of the, I, I lost just about everything. Okay. Still have a few good friends, uh, but popularity, oh, screw that crap. Accolades of men, it'll pass. I don't like riding alone, riding. I can do it, don't it? God bless you. Uh, not a blessed bit of morality here, I don't think. Uh, so I just say, uh, God bless you. You do the right thing. You, uh, if you're a man, 
Yeah, balls. Open the door for a lady. If you're her, a lady, look into the eyes of the man who's holding the door open for you. He's not challenging you on on your independence, on your femininity. He's not saying, well, you're, you're a weakened individual and someone has to open the door for you. No, no. What he's doing is uh, treating you probably as he was taught to treat a lady because that's how we were raised. So, God bless you, eh? Don't be hard on each other. Hey, you might... You might remember Cowboy Jim. God bless. Hey, I'm not going anywhere. I just realized what that sounded like. Oh, crap. No. Remember, uh, you, 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 remember what I tried to do, I have tried to do. And on the 15th, well, I hope that little prick, oh, geez, I could have beat him chose not to and wanted to save my job. Oh, didn't that work out well? God bless.